So if I were to ask you as a pedal powered kayak angler, how far can you paddle your kayak if you had to? And I bet a lot of you wouldn't be able to honestly answer that question. I know I can't. Um, I can make a guess about how far I could go before I would fatigue. Uh, but I've never really gone out and put my upper body through that trial in this particular kayak because I've become so heavily dependent on the pedal drive. So if this were to fail, say five, seven, or 10 miles from the boat ramp, would I be able to get back to shore, back to my landing site with just my paddle alone? So it starts, it starts to get to me thinking about, um, you know, should I know what my range is? What is the average speed I can maintain in my kayak? Can I go against a headwind or current? Is it better to paddle with the drive in place or is it better, better to pull the, the drive out? So these are some of the questions I'm gonna go over today as well as helping you decide what kayak paddle is correct for you. Um, a lot of us will just buy a cheaper paddle because we're so heavily dependent on the pedal drive, but you might wanna optimize and get the right paddle for you for the right situation, one that you're going to be able to comfortably use because in an emergency situation, this might be uh, of particular importance in getting you back to where you need to be safely. So let's just start by talking about uh, the different types of materials that kayak paddles are made from. So the cheapest ones you'll find that are often in that you know, $50 to $60 range are going to primarily may, be made out of plastic or aluminum. So they'll usually have an aluminum or sometimes fiberglass shaft, usually aluminum, and then they'll have full plastic blades. Those are not nearly as durable. They tend to flex a lot more. And so because they flex, you're losing your propulsion, you're losing energy, uh, it's dissipating off of the blade and you're not getting as much push. So I don't really recommend them because they're not that durable. They could snap and break on you. Uh, they tend to be quite a bit heavier than a lot of other kayak paddles and uh, they're just not the ideal paddle. Okay, this paddle that I have here, which is the Carlisle Predator, angler paddle they call it the angler because it has this little hook here that you can use to retrieve your lures from trees and underwater on stumps and such this is a fiberglass shaft with a fiberglass reinforced polycarbonate blade so it's quite a bit lighter than a plastic or aluminum one this weighs about 40 ounces it's very durable and it's got a very stiff blade so it makes for a very efficient paddling. And that's what's nice about fiberglass is it's probably the most cost effective and lightweight material out there for paddling with. And you'll find that a lot of times the blades will be some sort of mix of fiberglass, although you can find pure fiberglass blades. Uh, oftentimes they'll mix it with some sort of uh, plastic or polycarbonate or even carbon uh, to strengthen that blade up a little bit. Now the other material is going to be like on this Old Town Casco blade. This is a carbon fiber paddle. So this thing weighs 40 ounces. This thing weighs barely 30 ounces. It feels like air. It's so light. Um, so this is a Kevlar carbon fiber handle. It's very attractive uh, with that weave on there. And then the blades are a nylon carbon reinforced nylon. So they're very stiff and extremely lightweight. I can, it doesn't feel like anything's out there on the end. And so these will oftentimes cost substantially more. Uh, these will typically, most of your fiberglass ones, depending on the manufacturer and uh, design, you're gonna get charged anywhere from you know, 80 to $150. Whereas most of your carbon fiber paddles are gonna be in that 200 to $400 range. So it is quite a bit more of an investment to get a carbon fiber uh, paddle, but man, does it feel really good in the hands. It's so lightweight. Um, it'll definitely reduce the amount of fatigue that you're gonna have. 
And that can make a big difference uh, when you're trying to paddle these really heavy uh, kayaks that aren't necessarily designed uh, for optimal pat uh, paddling. You also notice some pretty distinct differences here in the blade shapes of these two different paddles. See the Casco's got that long skinny blade, whereas the Predator's got this wider, fatter blade, a little bit shorter as well. And that all depends on what your angle is when you're paddling naturally. So a lot of the fishing kayaks out there, you tend to be pretty high up off the water. Um, so your, your angle at which the blade enters the water tends to be a little bit steeper. And that's where these wider, fatter blades actually excel. So I'll show you that. I started out in a sit-in side kayak when I was very young. And so you're very low to the water. And so these big aggressive blades aren't necessarily ideal. But here you'll see how steep the angle is naturally for me when I put that paddle in the water. And so because of that steep angle, most of the blade ends up in the water as I push back. So I'm getting really good efficiency with this blade. Versus a blade like this, these long skinny blades, where when I come in at this high angle, not all of the blade is ending up in the water. So, you know, something like 10 to 20% of the blade is still out of the water as I'm paddling. And so I'm not getting as much thrust. I, I notice it just when I'm out here. So let's just look at the speeds here. When I'm just sort of doing a casual paddle with this long skinny blade, I'm averaging about 1.4 to 1.5 miles per hour. Now, let's pull out this more aggressive blade and try to do a similar pace. And I'm doing about 1.6 to 1.7. So I'm just doing a little bit more, which can make a big difference when you're fighting a headwind. Okay, so now I want to do an experiment with this kayak. I want to see, um, you can see the prop turning here as I, as I paddle along. Uh, so I'm going to see if taking the drive out actually speeds up how fast I can paddle. So we're doing about 1.5, 1.6 right now. Now let's go ahead and pull this out. All right. Oh yeah, I noticed a big difference right away. Uh, I'm averaging 1.7 to 1.8 miles per hour. So at least for me in this prop driven kayak, having the, now I'm doing almost two, having the drive out actually makes a pretty big difference on terms of my speed. So that might be something you want to play around with. I know that when I used to paddle in my Hobies, the having the drive in place actually kind of acted like a, a rudder and kind of kept me straight. I'd pull my rudder up and uh, that helped quite a bit. But in this case, it seems that having the drive up does make a pretty big difference in terms of allowing me to paddle just a little bit faster. Now, today, there's not a lot of wind, so it's very calm out, and I'm not having to fight the wind that much. But I know from experience that when I've been out paddling in the wind, you can really lose a lot of speed when you bring these blades up into the wind. They act like little mini sails. And I tend to run my shaft straight. So you can see here there's these two other drilled out holes here I can turn it to 60 degrees in either direction um, and there are others that allow you to adjust at, at an infinite number of, look, of angles but I like I tend to use mine straight other people will find that an angled one is better but if it gets really windy and I need to feather 
then I will go ahead and rotate the blades. Now my blade angle is offset. So you can see that. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one hand that locks in and the other hand's going to rotate. And this is going to allow me, as I bring this forward, then you see how that blade starts to flatten out as I bring it forward? And then I gotta learn to rotate my wrists. But that basically what that causes, it forces you to do is you bring, as you're bringing the blade forward, it's more flat and doesn't catch as much wind. And so when you go down, and this hand basically spins free, and this hand I keep locked in place. And it is not something that I have mastered, but it definitely helps when you're trying to fight the wind. And it's something worth practicing is feathering. So this paddle, like I said, is the Carlisle Predator. They've replaced this with the Magic Angler. It's very similar in design and shape and a very affordable paddle at around $100 to $120. And this is the Old Town Casco, their carbon model. They also have a fiberglass model. They have these longer, skinnier blades. This one retails for about $190, um, but boy, is it very light. I really like this paddle. Um, so depending on what your needs are, there's a whole bunch of great uh, paddle manufacturers out there, and I'll put links to various ones below. Well, I hope you're able to get out on the water and practice your paddling a little bit, even if you are primarily fishing out of a pedal or powered kayak. And just work on your technique and find out what scenarios are going to work best for you if you find yourself in a situation where you're going to be depending on your backup paddle to get you back to where you need to be. Be safe out there. Practice social distancing. I'll see you next time. Bye.